Good day, folks. Welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chaser Cyclone video update today, the 20th of February 2015, from Yapoon. This update is sponsored by Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter, and my name is Chris Nitzo. Just a quick note before we start today, for our subscribers, on our current chase page, we've uploaded the preliminary data. This is data that I haven't even touched, I haven't even really looked at uh, in order to correct it. But if you want to know what the winds were doing today in Yapoon, have a look at that. And also, we've got some pressure readings there. Now, as I mentioned, these are uncorrected data, so please take them with a grain of salt. There are going to be changes to that data, but it will give you a good idea of what the wind speeds were like today in Yapoon. Once that data's been corrected, we'll release it to everyone. Also, Trav managed to pick up some video footage of uh, some roofs coming off. And I'm sure you've seen a ton of these, but we've got some damage photos there, some damage pics uploaded by a number of our, uh, by Trav and Shane, showing you the damage around town here in your... So here is a cyclone, Marsha, as she crossed the coast. She came through right just to the east here of Rocky, uh, to the west of Yapoon, uh, basically just on the western edge of Byfield here. So these areas just to the east cop the worst uh, of the winds of this system. You can see it here, still rotating around, now tracking in a south-southeast direction across the uh, Sunshine Coast, oh sorry, the Harvey Bay, uh, inland parts of the Harvey Bay over the night and it should continue to push in a southeast direction into tomorrow through the possibly the southeast coast district phenomenal system folks zero model support for this system the computer models failed miserably and because of that obviously the longer term predictions from both us and the bureau of meteorology failed miserably as well once the system was picked up in fact though the bureau of meteorology did amazingly well in actually tracking this system and remember yesterday we were talking about the fact that the steering mechanisms were always going to push it south but it just wasn't showing it yet uh, so thankfully it all happened as planned afterwards so as after that update came out it stalled and then started to push southwards fairly rapidly so we had an option here of St Lawrence or Yapoon we decided to stay on the eastern edge of the system and so we wanted to stay in Yapoon and I think we made the right decision I think that's where we got the best data from and I think uh, I think we've done a very good job here and then I do I, I don't mean to brag but I think the team did very well today still a category one sustained winds to 120 kilometers per hour are possible uh, sorry, sustained winds to 85 kilometres with gusts to 120 kilometres an hour are possible. Moving south southeast, as I mentioned there on radar, it has weakened. Destructive winds are no longer expected and is expected to become a tropical low overnight before it makes it to the sunny coast. Now, uh, sorry, the sunny coast hinterland, not the sunny coast itself. Uh, so what we should see, though, is the potential here for gale force winds just for a little while longer uh, on that forecast track. And that's why the warning has been extended southwards uh, almost to uh, Double Island Point now, because just simply you might see some gales from the system. But you can see here, as it crossed Yapoon, it was a weakening Category 4 system. As it crossed Rocky, it was a weakening Category Category 3 system so uh, it was certainly a significant cyclone thankfully where it crossed as a 5 it didn't really impact too many people uh, there's not too many people living in this region uh, however by the time it got to the major centers Yapoon and Rocky uh, those areas while they experienced destructive force winds uh, the thankfully the extreme core of the system had weakened by that stage Wind gusts up to about 112 knots, so over 200 kilometres an hour were experienced on Middle Percy Island. So it certainly was a Category 4 according to those observations, or getting up there. However, pressure data from Middle Percy Island, and it uh, was very, very close to the eye, uh, suggested more of a Category 3 intensity. Wind gusts to about 92 knots here at Sam Samuel Hill, which is basically uh, north, northwest, I guess, of where we are here in Yapoon. Pressure data getting down to about 976. The official readings in Yapoon are 987 was the minimum pressure. With wind gusts getting up to around about that 80 knot mark right around 12pm. Uh, which is, uh, just without letting you know what our data was, uh, it's very similar to our data. Our wind speed maximum was a little bit later and our pressure minimum was around that time as well. So we're, we're fairly closely aligned. Uh, a couple of hectopascals difference in pressure, which might account for we are, we are right on the coast, whereas the airport is a little bit inland. Uh, because what we have between the coastal observation to just even a couple of kilometres away is a very tight pressure gradient, so that could account for why the Bureau of Meteorology's readings were a couple of hectopascals below ours, but our wind data was quite similar. In fact, very, very similar. Rock
Rocky managed to briefly experience some uh, cyclonic conditions here. They got up to about 113 kilometres an hour officially, and that was done a few hours after, in fact, uh, after a, what we had here at Yapoon. So they, they had their maximum at around about 3 o'clock. We had our maximum at around about 12 o'clock. So it was about a three-hour difference between when they got their max and we got ours. Uh, their pressure reading was around about the same as Yapoon's, about 9.6... Uh, sorry, their pressure reading was lower because they were closer to what was an eye. Um, and you can see here, 113 kilometres an hour from the east-southeast, which veered violently here to the west at 113 kilometres an hour. So they did briefly encounter cyclonic periods here from around about 11.43 to uh, around about 12.50. So they had about an hour of cyclonic winds, and then they had another hour or so of cyclonic winds on the back edge of the eye. So you can see that their pressure reading was lower than ours, purely and simply they were, sim they were closer to the eye, but our winds were much stronger than theirs. Nothing overly significant in Gladstone, uh, around about 70 kilometres an hour is the maximum wind gust recorded there. Rundle Island, just off the coast, about 96 kilometres, so getting very close to the 100 kilometre an hour mark there too. Now, Rundle Island, even though it's a long way further to the east, it still managed to get stronger wind gusts than Gladstone, which is uh, further to the west and closer to the cyclone, uh, which is uh, obviously a sign that we don't have any friction out there in the on the ocean, and so that allows those winds to really continue through unabate and that accounts for the increasing wind speed here compared to an area that's closer to the cyclone center and it also accounts for the difference between Yapoon and Rocky so even though Rocky was closer to the eye Yapoon experienced uh, about 30 or 40 percent stronger wind gusts and wind speeds in general because we were able to be right on the coast and so you didn't have that frictional effect slowing down the winds. Wild and Woolly in Thangool at the moment, they're, they're experiencing wind gusts to around about 90 kilometres an hour and experiencing some torrential rain here between around about 5 and 7, 5 and 8 p.m. So they, their rainfall totals have increased dramatically here. So some very heavy rain coming their way uh, at the moment and also some strong winds. And you can see here south southeast to south to south southwest. So they're still south of the system centre. Perfect example of why the system moved in the way it did. So what you've got here is an upper level high located to the east of southeast Queensland here. And what the system was doing, and we'll, we'll draw some arrows here, I, you know, as you know, for those... You know that I love to use my arrows and my little lines. So here it was. The system was developing in this area. It was tracking in this west to west southwest direction. Then it uh, it rounded the northwestern periphery of that ridge and started to track in a south or even basically slowed down to a crawl there for a couple of hours and then began to be impacted by this southerly drift here. Now. In the future, what we're expecting to see is see this little thing here, this upper level low, it's going to push a little bit eastwards. The upper level trough is going to start to capture the system, and we're expecting a more southeast motion. Uh, and what we're going to see, though, is we're going to see a ridge and a trough, and the, 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 the ridge and the trough are going to fight it out for battle of the system. We're going to see it uh, either the trough win out and the system bombs and becomes stronger and pushes away to the southeast, or the ridge and the trough are going to fight, 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 fight like crazy. And what's going to happen is the end result is a weak low is going to drag northwards back into the Coral Sea. So... There, there are two options. The system's either going to track here to the southeast, bomb out, become a fairly strong trop uh, extra tropical low or extra tropical cyclone. That's option one. Option two is they're going to fight it out. It's going to create a lot of vertical wind shear, and whatever's left of the system, the remnants, the very, very weak low level circulation, will track here to the north. That's what the current guidance is su suggesting. And if you look at the type of vertical wind shear we're talking about here, we're talking about uh, 60, 70, 80 knots coming eastwards across uh, across southeast Queensland here, and that will just uh, really annihilate the system if it wants to try and fight it and remain tropical in nature. Uh, it's going to really struggle. Yet, if the system decides to transition to an extra tropical cyclone, that 60, 70, 80 knots of vorticity advection coming eastwards here, we're going to see a very quick, ra rapid, sorry, a very rapid intensification here of the system off the coast. But as I mentioned, it would be non-tropical if it did that. So let's have a look at some of the computer model guidance. Now, this is from the computer models at 10 a.m. today. So we can see here the GFS forecast model has the system doing the second option here and remaining here off the southeast Queensland coast. Now, this is out to day five.
correction, this is out to day five. So see what I mean about the system pushing here in a southeasterly direction? Then the battle between an surface to mid-level ridge and an upper level trough and what we have the ensuing battle means that the system is quite weak and pushes back up here to the north. So you can see almost a bit of a loop happening here. Uh, <laughs> wow, very interesting. But at this stage, look, when it gets further to the north, it is likely to be quite weak. You can see here only 22 knots, uh, just a basic circulation. The Navgem computer model just does not want a bar of that uh, and says that nothing's going to happen here. The system will just track southeast and you can see the trail here of the rainfall associated with it. In the UK Met, we have a fairly similar track to the GFS. You can see here the system tracking southeast, remaining here off the coast of southeast Queensland. The battle happens between the ridge and the trough, and what happens then is the eventual uh, demise of the actual strong system, and we have a very weak circulation pushing northwards back into the Coral Sea. The European model shows too that similar sort of track here where the system remains just to the east here of uh, the Queensland southeast corner and then the resultant weak circulation starts to push to the north but because it's so weak the European loses track of exactly where the system is going to go uh, purely and simply as I mentioned if it moves to the north we're expecting a very very weak tropical low. The CMC forecast track shows a complete uh, almost even split here between this track uh, continuing out here to the southeast becoming a stronger system and the track back to the north as a very very weak system. And while the GFS doesn't show that sort of uncertainty, it actually is actually quite certain at the moment that it's going to track further to the north. The big thing to note here is when it does this, it is expected to be weak. Now, I know, I know we all said that about this cyclone, but uh, at this point in time, looking at the steering mechanisms and the, the amount of jostling between the mechanisms at different levels of the atmosphere that's going to take place, I can't imagine the vertical wind shear will be too favourable here for a stronger system to track northwards, at least in the short to medium term. Now, what happens in the longer term? Well, who who knows? We we just we're not going to even delve into that far because this is already quite a complex interaction here with the system tracking back to the north. So we're not exactly sure if that's going to happen first, and then if we start talking about longer term, well, it, the point becomes moot because it, what happens if it starts moving southeast? Well, where there's no point talking about it. But I think it is important to note that there is going to be a jostle here for control of the system between two steering mechanisms. So the first one is the ridge that's going to try and push it uh, westwards. The next one is the upper trough that's going to try and push it northward, uh, eastwards. And as the upper trough comes in underneath the system, if it doesn't capture it, uh, the resultant back end flow of the upper trough is going to push it to the north. So yesterday also we had another tropical cyclone that hit the area here around Millingimby and we had a category 4 as it hit the coast and you can see now it's gone inland and appearing quite well here on Catherine Radar. So you can see here it's still a certainly a strong circulation and dumping some moderate to heavy falls of rain as it pushes across the top end. Just this afternoon tropical cyclone Lamb was downgraded to an ex-tropical cyclone but you can see here hit category 4 in the area between Millingimby and Elko Island is where it crossed and uh, it's certainly a significant tropical cyclone. Now something interesting happened around Millingimby last night. We don't actually have records of exactly what happened here to the observations. So the last we knew that the observations were getting uh, worse and worse as in the conditions were deteriorating. At 11 p.m. last night we had a wind gust of 89 kilometers an hour and a pressure of 987 and dropping like an absolute brick uh, between about 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock and then suddenly we don't have any more data there until 9 o'clock this morning. So I'm wondering exactly what the observations were in between that time frame so I'm hoping that there was some sort of backup there manually uh, that that we can see exactly how low the pressure got normally with these AWS's they do have a manual backup uh, so we can see things like minimum pressures maximum wind gusts even if they can't report automatically so hopefully someone will have the time to analyze that over the next couple of days to see exactly what Millingimby went through last night it would have been a very scary night for some of the residents because obviously they don't have the media coverage we do on the east coast so they don't have people documenting this thing like we do on the east coast and so a lot of the locals here would have been quite frightened about what's going on what would have been more frightening is the fact that Elko Island, the last thing they recorded was an, a wind gust of 150 kilometres an hour here at 5.50pm and since then the <laughs> the system just hadn't hasn't 
updated itself so we're not exactly sure what's happened at Elko Island either how bad things really did get so if you're in Millingimby and you saw that happening on Elko Island earlier in the, on in the day I'm sure you would have been very very frightened increasing your uh, fear of what was coming because you know when when a, a weather station goes offline it's normally uh, it's normally a sign that the conditions got pretty intense for it so you can see here 150k an hour was the last thing recorded from that station and that would have been the last thing Millingimby residents would have seen in terms of the analysis of this system. Observations here from Bullman also show a south a south easterly moving to a north northeasterly to northerly. So we can see here that the eye passed reasonably close to this particular location as well. Pressures got down to about 991 hectopascals here around about mid-afternoon or early afternoon today. If we look at the tropical cyclone ensembles, we can see that we're expecting a south-southwest motion here for the next couple of days, but then there is just a slight likelihood that it might pop off the coast here around Broome and could redevelop into a tropical cyclone. Very low probability, but it could still do it. Um, and so we do need to be mindful here. There is going to be a westerly shift, and that westerly shift is due to an upper-level high that develops, or sorry, is in this area, not really develops. But the system, as it tracks towards that upper high, the upper high then becomes the dominant steering mechanism and will push it away to the west. Now, how long that uh, mid to upper level high will remain the dominant steering mechanism will be crucial as to whether this system gets back offshore. And eventually, that upper level high is expected to weaken and the system track to the southwest again or south again. Similar scenario shown here by the CMC computer model. You can see south southwest motion here for the next couple of days and then followed by a sharp shift here to the west. So obviously these are the concerning members here. These ones here that push the system all the way west off the Kimberley coastline because that could present an issue here for the Pilbara or Gascoigne coastline in the longer term should that happen. Thanks to NOAA as well for the provision of the European graphics. It's usually very hard to get Euro graphics, but NOAA does provide them sometimes free of charge. And here we've got the strike probabilities from the Euro. You can see here that south-southwest motion followed by this more westerly shift. Now the Euro doesn't have such a sharp westerly shift here, and so therefore the only a very, very few model members push it just offshore and probably uh, not long enough to become a cyclone but overall the consensus is it remains inland. We'll dump a fair degree or a fair amount of rainfall here over the northern half of WA and then possibly into the western half of WA as well as the system recurves. Remember the crucial part of this WA folk is how far west will it push here and how sharp will this turn be. So if it pushes a little bit further to the north, uh, pushes west a little bit further to the north, then it's going to have a much increased chance of development into a tropical cyclone again off the Kimberley coastline. So we may not have seen the last of lamb yet. While I believe we probably have, uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to put the uh, nail in the coffin yet of tropical cyclone lamb because I do know that sometimes these upper highs can be quite strong here. And and can result in a westerly push for you know a thousand or fifteen hundred kilometers before they start to weaken their influence and then we start to get that recurve and if that happens then we still see a chance of a development into a TC off the coast. So tomorrow's rainfall mostly around the southeast corner of the state in Queensland in the northern parts of the state isolated showers and storms along the northern parts uh, right here around the North Tropical Coast Tablelands Peninsula region over the, over the Northern Territory, we're going to see uh, ex-tropical cyclone lamb continue tracking in a south-southwest direction tomorrow, but then on Sunday, <coughs> excuse me, we'll start to see a track more towards the west, and so we'll see those heavy rainfall totals uh, developing further to the west and starting to impact the Kimberley region, which has been quite dry the last few. While it's all been happening in the NT in Queensland, the Kimberley's been quite dry. Over the southeast corner of the state, we can see a fairly, fairly marked decrease in rainfall here with most of the rain now pushing offshore so all those dire predictions from uh, from people you know of, of um, monumental rainfall not really going to happen it was only ever going to happen if the system was going to stall and and thankfully uh, th those access rainfall totals which were out there for one run were quickly uh, quickly diminished as the next run came out and realized its errors on Monday, we have a fairly heavy rainfall up here around the northern half of WA. Now, that's all to do with extropical cyclone lamb continuing to push westwards here. As I mentioned, there is still a chance it could get offshore. If it does, watch out again. 
Over Queensland, we'll see an increase in shower and storm activity across northern Queensland as we see some more instability push into this region. And we'll continue to see isolated showers, possibly some thunderstorms too, in the southeast corner of the state. On Tuesday, we'll see a big increase here in shower and storm activity expected across the northern parts of Queensland, Herbert, Lower Burdick and North Tropical Coast and Tablelands District, uh, particularly along the ranges, uh, with not too much in the way of steering flow at that particular time, uh, we may not see some of those get off the coast. We hopefully will, but at this stage, particularly on the ranges and just west of the ranges. Now, over here you can see it's all happening. We've got a northwesterly flow coming onto the, onto the coast. We've got ex-tropical cyclone Lamb located somewhere near the coast. Now, as I said, touch wood, uh, it doesn't push off the coast. If it does push off the coast, then it would have a moderate to high potential for redevelopment. The other thing you can see across WA is an extension of that rainfall further to the south and east. Meanwhile, uh, the Northern Territory's top end is going through monsoonal break conditions as tropical cyclone lamb or ex-tropical cyclone lamb pushes into WA and takes a lot of the, a lot of the moist flow with it. Anyway, folks, that's us for today. Hopefully tomorrow night I'll be uh, going back to our standard updates. So we will be back in towns all tomorrow night. So I'll have all my uh, models and all my little arrows and lines and all sorts of things at my disposal. Thanks for watching tonight. We'll have another one for you tomorrow night.